Aloha and welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Sister Power's vision is that women everywhere will learn to live as sisters, to respect each other's wounds, to promote each other's progress, and to benefit from each other's knowledge. Our vision is to create activities and services designed exclusively to increase women's networking opportunities and to build the knowledge and skills that can lead to self-sufficiency and empowerment. And I'm so happy today to have a very special guest with us, Tadia Rice, owner of Rice Consulting. Welcome, Tadia. Thank you, Sharon. It is an absolute joy to be with you today. You do realize you were the first person I met when I came to Hawaii. Oh, yes. another first. Yes, another first. <laughs> I love it. Um, oh, great. This is what I love about this. And, and our title today is How to Help Women to Succeed. And you are the perfect, perfect guest to lead us on this journey. And so we have so much to talk about. We do. And so let's just get started. All right. How about that? All right. Again, we have Tadia, Dame Tadia Rice. <laughs> who is a knight in the chivalric orthodox order of St. John right here in Hawaii. You all do such good work for others. And now you have become part of an only 90 native born and naturalized who won the 2017 Ellis Island Medal of Honolulu a few months ago in Hawaii. Congratulations, Tadia. Now, I have a quick question for you. Sure. And this was over a month ago, so you're just coming back from New York from this prestigious award. How do you feel? It is indeed an honor. The Ellis Island Medal of Honor, which is given every year to less than 100 Americans, um, was so exceptional, and I had no idea what it was going to be like. And it was indeed an honor. I've, I've never been honored in such a significant way, full of pomp and circumstances. And on Ellis Island with the Statue of Liberty next to us. It was very significant and, and very symbolic. Um, and I was very happy to join so many people that I had admired for so long. And here I was among them. Wow. That, well, you're the perfect person. You've done such good work. You're a keynote speaker. You're a, you're a consultant. You're a star. You've, you're, you're a star. You've acted in films, and you have several books under your belt. Uh, let me ask you this. The Ellis Medal of Honor ranks among the nation's most renowned awards given to those who have shared knowledge, compassion, exceptional talents and abilities, and significant philanthropic and humanitarian contributions to this country in a spirit of generosity and the lofty ideals of democracy. The U.S. Senate and House of Representatives have officially recognized the Ellis Island Medals of Honor, and every recipient is listed in the congressional record. That includes you now. Yes, it does, and I was very happy to be representing Hawaii to do so. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it was, it was uh, um, remarkable. I mean, pictures tell the story much better than I can. But what was so wonderful was to be with people and what most excited me was that the youngest ever Medal of Honor recipient is Malala Yousafzai, the young Pakistani girl who was shot in the head because she believed in education and still does and is a warrior fighter for women around the world for education and of course that is, is exactly what I feel as well. And there were, you know, and then I, I got to meet Hamid Ulakaya, who's the Turkish fellow who came to the U.S. with nothing, and he started Chobani Yogurt, and it has become not only the number one selling yogurt product, but he has a very humane business, a very human way of treating his employees who actually become stockholders in the company, and it's just a very new model of doing business that I really hope others will embrace. Oh, that sounds absolutely wonderful and just a little intimidating with all these fabulous people. <laughs> so tell me, so, so who are some of the other medalists? Oh my goodness. Well, what was very interesting was that, you know, there's Nobel laureates, uh, 
so many, there's like 2,000 people in the 31 years that this award Ooh. has been given. There were Nobel laureates, civil rights leaders like Coretta Scott King, and um, uh, Rosa Parks, Cesar Chavez, who I had the honor of marching with in, 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 in the day, um, Elie Wiesel, uh, political leaders, Madeleine Albright and Joe Biden, uh, Charlie Rangel, who I also had a chance to be with. What a charmer he is. Mm. Um, then this year in this class, I was with Buzz Aldrin, 87 years old. That man walked on the moon, and if he could go back and walk on it again, he would. He, no glasses, fit as a fiddle, amazing man, truly, and he actually spoke, and his message was that we are always um, uh, discovering mm. this is an adventure and that we must remain committed to discovery in the universe, uh, starting with ourselves, of course. So that was really wonderful. Um, Deepak Chopra has received the award. Dr. Oz, who I was also with in New York. Uh, Ruth Westheimer, who is a, a kick. Um, and there's also other medalists, Mike Wallace and Diane Sawyer. Oh, my. And this year, Fareed Zakaria, of whom I'm a fan for sure. Um, and we were together and had a talk, and I invited him to Hawaii, and he's never been, and so I do hope he will come. His kids were very, very anxious. So it was great. It was great. Sounds like it. I see that seven U.S. presidents have also won, and three secretaries of state, all women, by the way. Yes, ma'am. I, I love hearing <laughs> that. All about empowering women. And our own long-serving senator, the Honorable Daniel Inouye, was among the very first group in 1986 when the medals were first given. And I had the opportunity to meet uh, the gracious Senator Daniel Inouye. And so tell me more. Well, um, it, there's a, it, it is a, an amazing history to how and why these medals began. And, uh, you know, initially there were a lot of celebrities and noted people, Bob Hope and Frank Sinatra, Quincy Jones, Jones, Paul Simon, Penny Marshall, um, Natalie Cole, Gloria Estefan, very diverse group. It was really wonderful. And uh, Eddie Olmos, who of course I know from LA Days, Casey Kasem, Alex Haley, Martin Scorsese. So there was a host of celebrities early on. Now it is more uh, about scientists and, um, and a lot of sports figures who have been Olympians. I mean, Muhammad Ali won the first oh. year, Evander Holyfield, a, a lot of really, really Remarkable people. I mean, no, it, everybody is has done something or things, a lifetime of work, a special uh, discovery of some kind, a scientific breakthrough, something that uh, moves forward humanity and moves forward the country and our nation in terms of being innovative and um, and, and modern and and just wonderful. Wow. Yeah. You know, in the first year of the award with Senator Inouye was a remarkable Muhammad Ali, as you spoke earlier. And the list of medalists reads like a who's who of sport. Joe DiMaggio, Mickey Mano, Arthur Ashe, mm -hmm. Tommy Lasorda. I remember those yeah, names were Tommy Lasorda, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Evander Holyfield had the opportunities to see him fight in Las Vegas. Oh my remarkable. And Arnold Palmer. Yeah, so tell me more. Well, um, I mean, it is a who's who. Yeah. It really is a who's who. So for me, uh, to now be among who's who's uh, is, is very exceptional. And I was indeed extremely honored to be among such caliber mm -hmm. of individuals. Wow. Do you know why you were chosen to receive the Medal of Honor? Well, I don't know the specifics of the panel that... Uh, identified me, but one, I knew a, a previous medalist, and you're nominated only by previous medalists. And so this friend of mine, who's known me for 40 years, literally witnessed my lifetime of trying to break ceilings in the corporate world and entertainment and international relations. She watched me develop my career as a management consultant, and ironically, we both became organi organizational dynamic experts, mm. and keynote speakers as well. So we have a lot of notes to compare. Um, 
but she saw that I was very consistent in my uh, fights for promoting women's rights and the rights of marginalized communities, the elimination of racism, uh, trying to make the world a better place. She was very close to me when I was creating the Tahare Association, which is a nonprofit, and we've educated 22 girls around the world, um, with the criteria being that they are agents of change in their communities. They don't have to have the best grades, but they have to be an agent of change in their community. So she she saw me through different board commitments mm -hmm. that I've made and s that benefit social and economic marginalized communities. And she knows that for the last six years I've been volunteering at Kailua's women, Women's Prison, the Hawaii uh, uh, Women's Correctional Center. And I often tell great stories about how wonderful these women are who, who I have the privilege of working with. Well, you know, before we switch gears, we have the, your beautiful beautiful award that's displayed here. And tell me a little bit, when they awarded you this beautiful award here, what was going through your mind? I, I don't know. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> okay, it, was, real. it was so overwhelming. Um, you know, and you, you, you're you behind this um, stand-up of the medals and, you know, they present it to you on your neck and there's pictures and flashing cameras. and you don't really get it until it's over. Mm -hmm. And then you're very swiftly moved to here and you sit on a dais and you're, you know, you're doing things and it's like a three hour program followed by an incredible dinner actually in the Ellis Island Museum. All this is placed on the island. So you're ferried over and I mean, it's very well coordinated and one thing happens after another. And you watch as everybody else is shown, because your, your picture's on this jumbotron, and they specify who you are, what you do, and what your ethnic background is. And, and so you, you kind of begin to see the bigger picture. There were 37 ethnic groups represented. 37. So it was interesting to see people from all over the world. From um, And these are a lot of newer immigrants. So you had people from Iran and Turkey and Korea and China and um, Cuba and various places around the globe who were new immigrants. Then you have your older fifth generation and third and fourth generation Americans who were of Italian uh, extraction or uh, Polish or uh, Eastern European or, or wherever. I mean, and so as it happened, as it unfolded, you began to see what this was because mm. I really hadn't uh, been able to appreciate what it was because I've never been. Um, and so by the end of the night, you do feel honored. Mm -hmm. All four branches of the military are there. They traditionally participate. They honor you as you walk in and up. And at every point, they're saluting you. And they're playing music. And it's extremely patriotic and very, very American. <gasps> so it was really <laughs> something I hadn't quite experienced in the same way as any other experience that I've had. Now, can anyone attend? I mean, once you are honored and you receive this letter, I'm sure there was a special letter. Was it? How was it delivered to you? Was it via email? No, I, um, a formal mail, a formal invitation, a formal letter. Everything was very formal. Um, snail mail, and and they call you, they talk to you, they ensure that you can attend. Because if you can't attend, you know you you can't go. Um, and first choices are for the medalists and their guests, and then. Uh, previous medalists and their guests. So it's not really open to the public. Okay. It's, it's really quite elite uh, and exclusive to people who are within that medalist community. And of course politicians, the New York, uh, all, and because it takes place in New York, you have a lot of New York people. Well, I'm excited to hear more, and we're going to take a short break, and we'll come back with Tanya Rice and finish this journey. Thank you. Aloha, my name is Raya Salter, and I am the host of Power Up Hawaii, which you can see live at from 1 to 1.30 every Tuesday at thinktechhawaii.com and then later on YouTube. I am an energy attorney, clean energy advocate, and community outreach specialist. And on Power Up Hawaii, we come together to talk about how can Hawaii walk towards a clean, renewable, and just energy future. To do that, we talk to stakeholders all over the spectrum, from clean energy technology folks to community groups 
to politicians, to regulators, to the utility. So please join us Tuesdays at one o'clock for Power Up Hawaii. Aloha, I'm Tim Apichaw, host for Moving Hawaii Forward, a show dedicated to transportation issues and traffic. We identify those areas where we do have problems in the state, but also the show is dedicated to trying to find solutions, not just detail our problems. So join me every other Tuesday on Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm Tim Apichaw. Thank you. Welcome back to Sisters Power, your host Sharon Yarbrough, and we're here with Tadia Rice, owner of Rice Consulting, and we have a lot more to cover, and our theme today is how to help women to succeed, and we have the perfect woman here. And we're going to change gears a little bit. We want to talk about your prison work and has so much impact on the women at Hawaii's Women's Community Correctional Center. What do you share? with them? Um, it has been such a fulfillment working with the women um, in prison who were incarcerated. And what I was able to do was really create a, a totally different program, of basically skills building. And um, I help them build self-esteem and self-confidence, which is what they need mm. so, so much. They also need education. So essentially, I do the same work with them as I would do with a CEO or a leader of any organization. Um, their work is to learn to be comfortable speaking in front of people, to have emotional and mental clarity, to be able to think through situations, impulse control, which all of us have to work on, um, to how to communicate clearly which is a very strong part of what I do for CEOs and leaders, how to develop emotional intelligences, and a, a host of other uh, skill sets that is really important for anyone mm -hmm. to better themselves, improve, perfect, uh, continue to strive for excellence. And for them especially, it is a healing piece. They are able to heal once they have knowledge and self-reflection. Wow, and I want people to know that you have mentored me throughout the years as well, and I appreciate that. And we never, I love this platform, because sometimes you never have a chance to just to sit down and have girl talk and really find out the more details what our friends are doing. So, let's move forward. So, you were recognized for having lived an extraordinary life of generosity to others, which you share with us with the women's prison. It's no surprise you You've been recognized by the United Nations, U.S. Congress, California State Senate, and the cities of Atlanta, Honolulu, and Los Angeles. Yes, Los Angeles was home to me for a very long time before I moved to South Africa and before I came to Hawaii. And one of the wonderful things we have in common is we were both Angelinos at one time, in our, one time in our life. And we knew a lot of the same people, Mayor Tom Bradley and Congresswoman Ambassador, Senator Diane Watson, who has been so helpful uh, uh, in many ways and been involved. Um, you know, when I was young, I was always searching for truth as an adolescent. And so when I was a teenager, um, I learned about the Baha'i Faith. Mm -hmm. And the teachings there really were very sensible. And, and the teachings were you should, every single human being should have a craft, a profession, a skill. And once they attain that, as they work in that, they continue to strive for excellence and perfection. And when you do that, your work, 
actually becomes service to others. Mm -hmm. So service is a linchpin, unity is a linchpin, and when you're able to incorporate a, a, that kind of spiritual component, that motivation to do well, do good for others, as well as yourself and your family, it's amazing the opportunities that come to you and the rewards of how good it feels to do good work Ooh. and be a good human. I don't want to do anything unless I'm, it's a feel-good thing. And I think that's our brand. I think more people should incorporate that if it feels good, it is good. And so uh, tell me, what was your takeaway from the Ellis Island Medals of Honor? Very interesting. Um, it was great to see the diversity of individuals being honored. Those 37 ethnic groups really did span the globe. Um, it was a celebration of immigrants. And you know, in America, we're always selling the immigr uh, celebrating the immigrants and their contributions to the United States. For me, though, as I sat on the dais looking out at the thousand people who were essentially there to honor us, I thought, you know, not all of us are immigrants. Mm. And not all of us have immigrant backgrounds. And as I was thinking about it, I realized, you know, the immigrants benefited really from the contributions and sacrifice of the First Nations people of this land, who were wonderful um, uh, stewards. Malama Honua, same thing uh, that Hawaiians do and that we want to strive for the world to do, they took care of that land. Of course, it was taken from them, stolen from them, genocide committed against them. And then it was enslaved Africans who were then forced to work the land and literally on their backs build this country. Mm. Buildings, bridges, everything, you name it. So for me, I thought, you know, I wonder if immigrants realize that they have benefited from the sacrifice of those people who suffered and they have now benefited. So I really hope that Americans and anyone that I talk to can realize that we have to acknowledge this truth and we have to celebrate and honor First Nations people, enslaved Africans, um, colonists and immigrants when we talk about how great America is because it wouldn't be great if it weren't for every one of those communities. So today, more than ever, all of us are called on to show the same kind of courage that all of those communities demonstrated when they were either forced to leave their land, forced to work and build the country, come to new lands that they didn't have opportunities in before, and, uh, and become a great nation because of those elements and factors. I feel the passion that you're, and I see that your, your eyes are watering up and I see how passionate you feel about this. So this has really impacted you, this journey at, with receiving this prestigious award. Um, and, and I like your take on that and I'm glad you had the chance to share to the thousands of women and men who are listening to this show. We need to keep that in mind. Yes, so you, America's identity is very, very big, very large, and we have to be informed and not everyone is. School is never out. That's right. It's never out. You have an extensive background that crosses so many industries. You are a playwright and performer with two CDs that competed for Grammys. How did you achieve all of this? Well, first of all, I started out very young. Second of all, I'm now very old. So I'm not playing <laughs> that. So, so there's time. I have a lot of time to do this. I okay. didn't do it in a week or two. Um, but I was, uh, I don't know why it is, but from childhood I always was curious, always inquisitive. I mean, and to the extent that people really didn't like me asking all the questions that I asked. But I always wanted to learn more and more and more. So I was very willing to learn anything and everything, even if I didn't get it, like physics. I don't get physics, but I want to learn about it. Um, and I also realize that if you work hard and you learn everything you can and then you begin to identify opportunities and seize them, life rewards you. Ooh. Life rewards you. And you can't anticipate what those opportunities are. You won't know what they are. 
Wow. But you say yes. Always say yes. Always say yes. You are a popular keynote speaker whose presentation, Lead with Aloha, actually proves the science of aloha. How did that happen? Accidentally, like most Ooh. things happened to me in my life. I was so fortunate. I'd been coming to Hawaii for a very long time, since the 70s. And I knew that one day I would move here and stay here and be here. But I had other things I had to do before then. When I got here, I was absolutely astounded when I learned about Auntie uh, Pilahi Paki, who created the Aloha Spirit. It was actually called the Pacific Prayer initially, and eventually the legislature adopted it as the Aloha uh, Spirit law. It's actually a law on our books. So there were these five aspects of what is in aloha. She took the words of aloha in English and made acronyms for them. But she was much, much deeper than that. Most people don't know the depth uh, of how far she went with this. So I then got to uh, befriend Kumu Ramsey Tom, who became my cultural Kumu. And I just adore this man and his knowledge. And of course, he was one of her her students. So he really schooled me about Auntie Pilahi. And as I learned more and more about the different components of Aloha, I said, why, why does this work? I mean, it works, but why? So my curious mind started researching. What happens socially, psychosocially? What happens physiologically when we express kindness and perseverance and unity mm. and all of these parts of that comprise the Aloha spirit? And so I contextualized those, and I then was able to explain uh, and often to uh, audiences from the mainland who come here, a lot of businesses, that if you incorporate these behaviors in your life, with your family, with your employees, with your co-workers, your leadership uh, skills and ability exponentially increases. And I use examples and I show exactly how and people get it. They get aloha and they see it's deeper than just hello, goodbye. Well, you know, we we have so much more to cover, and our time is ended. Thank you so much, Tadia. We'll have to do a part two. We will. All right. How to help women to succeed. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha. Thank you.